You guys ready to take a little trip down memory lane? Here we go. There were 418 products in this section that I haven't listed on the website in quite a long time. We're going to click on this and we're going to talk about a few things. This is the hobby of days gone by. I used to have an aquatic isopod culture. I've had Argiope spiders on the website before, Arizona black hole spiders, haven't listed any of those in a couple years, Arizona brown dwarf scorpions. A couple years ago, I listed Arizona elephant beetles, Megasoma punctulatus for the first time, arrow-shaped microthena, always a pleasure. Tarantulas, I've had a ton of them off and on throughout the years. I probably won't bother to mention them all. I lost my Australian roach culture, even though I never sold a single living one that I can recall. I had the culture for many years, just out of pure, pure curiosity. Banded flower mantises. I probably took this picture back in, I don't know, 1999. Best beetles come and go. Used to have great sourcing on black death feigning beetles. It's been a while. I just recently reacquired Blabberus discoidalis discoid roaches from Sean. Email address, good dirt. Good to see them again. I lost my culture of them three or four years ago after a bad Ford fly outbreak. Put them out in my garage. Got too hot out there or I forgot about them or something. Man, it happens. Bordered mantises. I've captive bred these a few times, Arizona species, Glomerus marginata, pill millipedes, one of a few different species I've kept over the years. A few more tarantulas, brown lynx spiders, cactus longhorn beetles, always a fun one. I've had a few moths here and there over the years. My friend Oren sent me this picture of a Cecropia moth, and that's his daughter right there when she was much, much younger. Super cute picture, and he must look back on that every once in a while. And in the same way that I do, looking at my children and some of the times that they held bugs. Not very often, if I'm being honest. I used to bust up this charcoal and put it in a plastic bag, sell it through the website. I'd take a hammer. Man, that was a dirty job. A couple other tarantulas. Springtails, Chinese mantises, Chinese vinegaroon, very uncommonly offered. It's been a long time since I had those. I used to have these, Passimachus, warrior beetles, viridens as a species. They have this beautiful metallic green uh, edge perimeter around the pronotum, sometimes creeping up here on the elytra too, and then uh, along the perimeter of the wing covers as well. They have red CT, fine hairs around their mouths, not evident in this picture. Let's see if we had another picture here. Um, well, I have to move the camera for you guys to see it, but one of my all time favorite beetles to have ever featured through the website. And I used to have good sourcing on them, not for a long time now. Uh, colossal roaches, lost my culture of them. I don't know, four years ago or something, have not reacquired them. Cryptocercus, neat species. Oh, I forgot I ever even had Silisticus convexus. Funky pill millipedes, <laughs> pill bugs, I mean, isopods. Uh, Dermesta beetles, uh, this was a cool product that I made for the website a long time ago. It's uh, something I called the Desert Beetle Glow Kit. And it was just such a cool little terrarium, but just a little bit on the small side. Had a glowing mushroom right there. Neat product that never really took off. It was just a pain in the butt to put together, so I stopped making them. Uh, Desert Beetle Sampler. A lot of you probably were familiar with that product. I used to sell three different kinds of desert beetles and, uh, you know, as a group, but um, just haven't been doing it lately. Uh, these beautiful purple beetles, the picture's not doing it justice there. Oh, diving beetles in the genus Thermonectus. You know or you don't know. Oren's roach. Neat that my friend Oren has had a few things named after him. Lots of good relationships with scientists paid off for him. Uh, these dwarf fast isopods, hardly even remember having those on the website. Uh, dung beetle sampler. Variety stinks? Really? No, not really. 
I used to have like maybe three different species of dung beetles in this sampler pack. Anymore, I really only have these phaneous rainbow dung beetles. Dwarf hissers. Does anybody in the U.S. still have those? Hisser dude or invertebrate dude as you go by on YouTube. Let me know. Dwarf purples, still got those. These Christodus, man, those things just come and go. Russ on Aquarimax talks about them every once in a while and about how the cultures seem to be blooming, doing great, and all of a sudden, boom, they die. This picture here I took after I collected this 70-ish millimeter male Dynasties Granti in Arizona. My first trip down there ever back in 1999 or 2000. Oh, man, what a great trip that was. And every trip to Arizona is that great. Here's the ebony or black form of the ivory millipedes. Go here to elephant stag beetles. Um, first time featured ever just here this past year in 2020, the summer of these very beautiful green beetles, the depth of green in them, these emerald euphoria beetles, incomparable. Eublabrous ivory, my culture of this species is recovering. I've probably had them for over a decade. These Eurie Cottus opaca, haven't seen them in a while. I'm not sure they're still in the U.S. hobby. My flame leg millipedes should be reproducing very soon. Flat horn hissers. I've had them for many, many years and I just lost my culture after such a long time. Flatty wall spiders, perhaps my favorite spider ever. Uh, Selenops is the genus. I just love the symmetry of them, the way their legs all go out at angles you know, right across from each other like that, super cool. Used to have great sourcing on these Scolopendra longipes, formerly Scolopendra alternans. They change the names in the hobby from time to time. Florida predatory stink bugs breed rather well in captivity as far as true bugs go. Spinning spiders, yes, a spider that spits its web to ensnare its prey, super cool. Haven't had the Florida skunk roaches in a few years, would like to see them again. Florida bolus, I mentioned earlier that one of my friends, Oren, has one of these species named after him. Flower crab spiders, one of the most beautiful spiders in the U.S. hobby. Of course, one of the best books ever. Sand roaches, ghost mantises, garden mantises, Orthodera minestralis, a species that was once more popular in the hobby, probably one of the top 20 most regularly occurring species within the hobby, partially due to a breeder down in New Zealand, I think it was, who would send them out to hobbyists rather frequently in days gone by. Various giant African mantises in the genus Photoromantis, giant glossy back. <laughs> giant glossy black pink leg millipedes, Dendrostreptus macrocanthus. Almost easier to say the scientific name, long as it is easier to say than the, uh, the common name. Um, by the way, I do have these and I'm hoping that I'm going to be able to grow them up just a little bit more and that they will be reproducing again soon. They're doing really well for me. I hadn't seen them in years. They used to be popular in the hobby maybe, I don't know, eight years ago. Um, nobody seems to have them anymore. And I'm hoping that the culture that I reacquired from someone who may have re who may have acquired them from me originally 10 years ago or so, uh, I hope that they do well for me. Uh, moving on here, giant lobster roaches. Man, I forgot those things even existed. I haven't had them in a while. Giant water scavenger beetles are awesome. Um, goblin roaches, I've seen those available a little bit here and there. Man, I wish I still had sourcing on these glow mushrooms. I actually have some Oleos Golden Huntsman's now, one of our largest true spiders here in uh, North America. And uh, I need to get them up on the new website, Goliath Beetle Adult Male. That's not even a monster specimen right there, um, but the white markings on it are quite extraordinary. Recently deregulated as of a few years ago, and it's been popping up here and there on the website. You can see a third instar larva of that same species there, Goliathus goliatus. 
they get rather large. It's a meaty bug. Um, oh, the Great Plains tiger beetles. Also one of the coolest bugs ever. There it is eating a cricket. Let's blow that picture up a little larger. One of the best beetles in the country, of course. Predatory, just, I was gonna say something that I'm not supposed to say on YouTube. They're awesome. Green banana roaches. <laughs> I struggle with those, just being honest. Uh, another tarantula. Sorry, sorry tarantula people. I mean, everybody's got tarantulas on YouTube. We're, we're talking about insects today, primarily, and the millipede hobby and non-tarantulas. Green caterpillar hunters. Man, I wish I still had my video up from my old YouTube channel. Had the coolest little Irish song about these beautiful green beetles. Um, green link spiders. I'll be listing some of those on the website soon from our captor, captive produced ones. Oh, patchwork roaches and pink cockroaches. Haven't had those, either one of those in probably a decade. I'm guessing those aren't in the U.S. hobby anymore. I'd like to know. I had a really good culture of harlequin roaches going about four or five years ago again, but it just died out of nowhere. Helgramites are always fun. It looks like the kind of thing they dropped in Spock's ear, which also kind of looks like an ant lion larva. Hemiscolopendra marginata, the Florida blue centipede. Pro probably the most beautiful centipede in the U.S. hobby, and um, this picture doesn't even do it justice. The blue rings, tipped legs, um, just so beautiful. Hard to get a good uh, photo of things. Uh, hermit beetles, I think somebody here on YouTube asked about them recently. One of the best ones uh, ever for many years. One of the only beetles that was regularly captive bred in the U.S. hobby. Um, of course, I was the only person really dealing them, but um, I had good sourcing for them for a long time. Heterophrynus batesii. Man, now that's a cool species. The largest arachnid in the world, um, if you are talking about leg span. And of course, we're talking about these antenna form legs here, outstretched larger than the goliath bird eater. And uh, some more tarantulas, tiger centipedes, another mantis. Oh, these ones are so often requested. The black and white Haldemanai um, ironclad beetles. Wish that I had sourcing on them. Someday, someday. Kenyan giant red legs. I actually think that I have those going again downstairs. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. If you, oh, everybody's always asking about the Lethoceris giant water bugs. Uh, that bug right there, three inches long, not counting those outstretched arms. And uh, oh, Madagascar fire millipedes. If you've been in the hobby for 20 years, you remember the day they disappeared from the U.S. hobby long before the African giant black millipedes did. But they used to be, believe it or not, imported all the time by reptile dealers, and they were not too difficult to source. Um, milkweed tiger moths, I hardly remember even having any Lepidoptera butterflies and moths available on the website. Some funny little products I've had on there from time to time. Oh, these ones are cool. We're down here at the halfway point, so I'm gonna cut the video after I talk about this one. And we'll do another follow-up video at some point with the other half. But these are Motixia, bioluminescent millipedes. They don't just fluoresce. They don't just glow in the dark. They Bioluminous, that's not the word, biofluoresce. <laughs> um, they actually produce light. And so if your eyes are sensitive enough and you're out in the middle of nowhere, you will see them walking on the forest floor in the mountains of California, where I collected these two species and collected them in numbers enough to actually sell. But these not unattractive flat millipedes. You can see a pair there breeding 
in the photo. And uh, I was able to distribute them to quite a few hobbyists, all of whom failed with them, unfortunately. We'll come back and talk about the other half at some point soon. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions about these or uh, just for the sake of nostalgia, want to mention some of the other things that you remember from the hobby in the last 24 years, which is as long as I've had my website up. I have been in the hobby, the hobby, the online hobby longer than that. But this is how long I've had my website up. And uh, this was a fun trip down memory lane. Thanks for watching.